so in this video uh, i'm going to put it's going to be only about 3d referencing so if you may ask what is 3d referencing so you know that um you know that when you're coding a cell or maybe some let me say position i prefer calling it like that okay uh for instance you want to say okay i don't want that maybe you want to call this position here uh, this position here with the number 12 all right number 12 all right so obviously you don't want to um, okay that's how you call it if it's going to be f going to be f and f here and then what is here 24 so it's going to be f 24 right and um that that is what we call two dimensional because what is two dimensional it's more for like it's x x and y that's what your 2d so your three dimension you're expecting it to be like it from your physics class x y z so why x y z because you're actually calling something from another worksheet to another worksheet so it's going to it's going to have some length width and height that's how it means to be in three dimension so i'm, I'm just going to make an example how that work so let me say i have something here on this for instance um this is the sum right it's the sum of them so i want to use the sum on a second sheet that's where 3d referencing comes about let me say i want to put it here so the first question is to ask yourself, what do you do if you want to ask someone that is far away from you? So you know the answer? You'll shout, right? So literally what you are doing here, you are going to scream and try to call things that are on the other sheet, on this worksheet, okay? So you are, so for you to call someone that is not in the very same room as you, you need to actually shout. So let's try to shout, right? How do we actually shout? So because we are calling something, it's more of like a function type thing. So it's going to be an equal sign. Then I'm calling something on order, right? On orders, because orders is the spreadsheet with what I want. I'm calling something on orders. Because I'm calling something far away, what do I want to do? I want to shout, right? But who am I? Shouting in half is not alone. I have to shout. Hey, who am I shouting? I'm shouting C1. C1. <laughs> I'm shouting again. C1. So this is how it works. You you call where the person is and then you call their name. That's how you shout someone who's far away. You know, you'd be like, hey, you on the on the left side, come here. So on the left side, John, come here. So this is like where he is. This is his name. So let's try to do that in actual uh actual Excel. Let's go back to Excel. So we're saying who are we shouting? We are shouting someone from orders. So let's shout some let's shout someone from orders. Okay, orders. What am I doing? Let's shout someone from orders. We are shouting. So we need to shout exclamation mark, right? That what means to shout. Let's call something on C2. I hope there's something on C2. There's six on C2. Okay. Let's call something on um C12. I think that was where our average was something on c12 so go going back here you see how it works where is where is who you're shouting exclamation mark the name of who are you shouting so we call this 3d referencing points literally if this is x and y so this is this one is z so it's like three dimension i'm calling this column this row on this sheet so if i was calling something maybe on another sheet uh let me a worksheet here I'll put some number. You can call names. Let me call. Uh, let me let's write YouTube here. YouTube, right? What am I doing? I'm in a very bad position for us typing. Okay, let's call this YouTube on another. It is on B five, right? Let's call it here. Right? We want to call that YouTube. We're trying to call it just on this cell. Right? Then we're going to come on that very cell and then we're going to call who are you who are we calling we're calling from i think i put on spreadsheets three uh 
and then grows and spreads she three then i'm it's out it's not here right so what i need to do i have to shout right then i have to shout i forgot what it was i have to shout uh b5 okay i'm shouting b5 i'm calling b5 there okay b5 it's not on two it's on three okay so on, here there was a mistake I'm supposed to say b3 i think yes i'm calling youtube just came out right because i call him with the right name and i was calls him call him with the right location so this is what it means to also one thing that left from that i left from the other video net i need to work on is uh i call it holding referencing i don't know what the technical term for it but literally i'm saying okay uh let me say it's holding or constant type of referencing let me say i'm trying to they are numbers like their numbers like their rows and columns type of numbers and now there's a number here which is important like normally it's a vert right N numbers like who are constants it could be your gravity if you're in physics your vert in um in your in your accounting it could be your your your, your hourly rates if you're in hr different fields of different constants that you use and a lot of them i, I might not know the, all of them so obviously you want to 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 hold that number somewhere as a reference it shouldn't change so you use dollar sign so it's going to be dollar sign let me say c2 dollar sign c2 dollar sign um oh no dollar sign c then dollar sign two so i'm actually holding the column and the row we can also hold only the column right and leave the row as it is you can also hold um i can also hold what can I hold? I can also hold um, C. I can also pull the the, the 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 number only. So it's going to be C. Then dollar sign is here. Then two is here. So if you don't get what I'm talking about right now, let me just go and do an example because it's literally very hard to explain it. Uh, beside having to use it on Excel, so I'm going to create a very small data. Uh, Okay, let's try it. Okay, why I'm creating my data here, notice that I have to tell you something. I have to tell you that if you have some sort of data that is have some sort of pattern like this, you can actually extend the pattern throughout uh, to do the math for you. See, just and extend it. Even if it's things like days, I think it can also do the same thing. I'll do like Monday, Tuesday, and then it'll extend for me. Or also one, uh, let me say two, Three, it's obviously have some sort of pattern now, a very arithmetic type of pattern uh, oh it just did everything uh, out for me so what if i want to do all okay i'm interested in the pattern what am i doing in a pattern for all these numbers right i can just drag these numbers across it will just auto auto feel for me so that's a cool stuff that you need to know yeah let me continue filling my data so we already talked about this is my data that i was working on just random numbers and these are marks for students i don't know which school is this one it's not doing very well okay so when i get an average obviously um average right and then we click here and then i'm trying to get an average from here to here right that's cool now it's get me an average for the student one right but what if i want to do it for all the students that's what i was talking about you can just literally come on, on the corner uh, and then on this corner you would get that um that's very small star type thing it's here then you drag you see whenever i'm dragging and it's just updates the average for each student right so if you go in here you can see that it changed to b and c yeah it's changed from b and c but oh the number is five it's now five here the number is now six here the number you can see that the number are now changing right so what if um i don't want some number to change because if i'm dragging along here the number is changing but if i don't want that so if i don't want that that way i hold i hold something let me say um uh it's not a good example see this five here 
I, 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 I want it to be used uh, everywhere, not changing. Because if I'm it be it be six here, if I'm coming here, it'll be B seven. If I'm coming here, it'll be B eight. I want it to be that B. What is this one? I want it to stay in that. Uh, what is it? B six. So I'm going to go here and hold B six. How am I holding B six? I go there, put that dollar sign we're talking about. Come here, put a dollar sign. The number didn't change, right? But look, if I drag around, the number will be changing. See here, it was five on the bottom. It changes. Why it changes now? Because you see, the B six is everywhere now. It's everywhere. That's what I meant when I'm saying you actually holding. So I mean to say, even if you're tracking along, numbers are changing, but don't update that number. So that number could be some sort of some weight, some weight of a mark or something. I don't know what it is in my context, but it's just some number that you don't want to change. So what else? Okay, I think that's all I, I need to talk about in this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. And also here, if there's something like this, you can also put a, a round function also. Let's put a round function. You can put a function inside of another function. Round function. That's my point of. Uh, and then it's going to be a semicolon. I want it in two decimal places. Then I want to close. Just, you see? I just put a function inside of another function. Come here. Look in the very top. Function inside of another function. What is it? Oh, I'm rolling my thing now. It's a round function first. First get an average. After you get an average, round it and then make it in a two decimal place. But remember the function here is working independent of the other function. So you can actually have a function instead of a function as much as I think uh, math does it and all other fields do it. So yeah, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.